Listen, I didn't come on here to go super in-depth about the 49ers kicking the Dallas Cowboys behind. I'm not going to curse yet because we're only 10 seconds in, and I know they kind of have a whole thing with the algorithm and all that stuff. All right, we ain't going to get into all that. But at the end of the day, San Francisco 49ers, they beat up on Dallas Cowboys 42 to 10. I can't say I'm surprised by the 49ers kicking their butt, but I am surprised ultimately by the final outcome of this game. We're going to dive into a few different things that I took away from this game, some things I heard them say, and then obviously tomorrow morning on the morning show, 8 a.m. Pacific, we'll dive into the rest of it. All right, but shout out to the San Francisco 49 fans who are up. It's about 10.20 p.m., and I know everybody's excited about this game. I haven't been live on uh, Bleach Report. I haven't been live on Locked On 49ers. And now I'm live on my YouTube channel, and I just want to touch on certain things, all right? You know, we've been on that good, good, all right, and all that good stuff, all right? But we want to make sure that we have an open discussion, have an open discussion about what we just witnessed, what we just saw, all right? Yeah, I know I wasn't live a whole lot this week, went live twice, once with Coach Desi, once with Ashley, all right? But I wanted to give my my natural, open, live reaction, for the most part, to this game. So shout out to everybody that's in the chat right now. I see everybody going up. I feel like it's the usual suspects, all right? Spy Nick Danger in the chat. Charlene uh, Crosley in the chat. Memphis Moan, what up? All right, all that good stuff, all right? But let's jump straight into it. What, what did we just watch? We just witnessed the San Francisco 49ers beat down on the Dallas Cowboys. And this, listen, whatever y'all say in the chat, this don't got to be buttoned up. This don't got to be politically correct. Let's just talk about how we feel. I'm going to tell you how I feel right now. All right. I got my, my boys, my bro. We in the chat. We in, we in the text and all that stuff. I think they truly understand now that the San Francisco 49ers, and the Dallas Cowboys are on two completely different playing fields. I thought it was closer than what we just witnessed. But clearly, Eric Crocker, sometimes you're wrong. And I was definitely wrong. All right. Let, let's start off with what I thought. I felt like there were three teams in the NFC. The three teams in the NFC I felt like were the Dallas Cowboys, the San Francisco 49ers, and the Philadelphia Eagles. Like, it's those three and then everybody else. But what I just witnessed today was it's the 49ers and the Philadelphia Eagles and everybody else until further notice. And when I say until further notice, there's no way, unless the Dallas Cowboys beat up on the Philadelphia Eagles twice, there's no way for the Cowboys to show that they belong on the same playing field or to be mentioned in the same sentence as the 49ers and the Eagles. You do not. Now, Cowboys and the Eagles... I feel like it should be close because, well, it's a divisional game. So divisional games are close. But one thing I just w realized while watching that game is when you just got to meet up in January or February, you got to bring your A game. And whatever the Cowboys' A game is, because they were ready for this. All right, let's talk about that. The Dallas Cowboys, the, their players – Right when you listen to Dak Prescott, you want to make me mad, huh? You know he he in the whole press conference. You want to make me mad? You you want me to like you know he, he in the whole the whole press conference and all that going on. They're ready for this game, and it really kind of meant more to the Cowboys from the standpoint of their expectations for the season and all that. But what it came down to was the 49ers just better. And not just better from the player standpoint. They're better from players, coaches, just execution, all that. For not just better. I see, I see Coach Rob in the chat. Shout out to Coach Rob. All right. And Coach Rob, you know what I'm saying? We done coach together, you know, we done coach kids together, all that, right? And shout out to my guy Jonah, Jonah Coleman. Uh Coach Rob, Coach Jonah. Coach Rob, Coach Jonah, and Raleek. And um uh, you know, I was hoping to see Raleigh on the field when USC and Arizona played last night, last night, Saturday night. But uh, we only saw Jonah. But Coach Rob, Coach Jonah, 
And uh, we we don't we don't coach together. Jonah had a big game, 180 yards. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you know whatever. Uh, but he understands what it means. Co- you know, Coach Rob understands what it means to be either out coached or when you feel like somebody else is like superior to you. I went with Coach Rob. We were in Atlanta, and this is when Jonah Jonah again last night. Jonah Coleman, my guy, he's at Arizona right now playing running back. Finally got the touches he deserved as a true sophomore. Uh, had 180 yards total between receiving and rushing against USC, big game. And he was our guy, right? right? You know, he was one of our guys. We had a bunch of guys in that middle school team uh, when we took them all to Atlanta, uh, from Stockton, California to Atlanta. But, uh, you know, when you feel like you can compete, we knew we could compete with everybody there. Right, Coach Rob? Like We knew. We knew we could compete with everybody there. And, and like, Seeing the talent, even when we lost in the championship, Coach Rob, it was just like it was like a disappointment. Like, damn, like it was a letdown. When the Cowboys lost today, Coach Rob, I ain't gonna lie, I don't think it was a letdown. Cause I don't think I think deep down inside they knew like dang the 49ers were just a better team. We played Zorts, right? I think it was Zorts, Coach Rob. And we had lost. We were up 14-0, and then we ended up losing in the championship. We in the championship, we were up 14-0 and we ended up losing. And it was just like, we were disappointed in ourselves that, like, man, like, what could we have done better, right? The Cowboys coaches right now, I think they realize, I think the 49 is just superior. I think the 49 is just better. And my group chat is going off. I got my big bro in the chat. I got my, my dog, Devin Mays, who was at the game. And I was texting Dev, and I'm like, Dev, you paid all that money just to get your ass kicked. Paid all that money just to get your ass kicked. And when you <laughs> we're on different playing fields. So when I look at the 49ers, and ultimately when I, went, when I came on here to say, when I look at the 49ers and where they are and what they are, don't compare them to any other team. The 49ers, the expectations for this team, uh, where they're headed, they're different than a lot of teams. And there's maybe 5% of teams that have the same expectations as the 49ers. And it's the Eagles and the, the Kansas City Chiefs. Like It doesn't matter what they do in the regular season. The 49ers can go and lose. Who the 49ers play next week? Cleveland Browns? It doesn't matter if the 49ers lose to Cleveland Browns. You know why? Because at the end of the day, 49ers know what their expectations are in the Super Bowl. So everything they do right now is about fine-tuning to improve to the point where they hoist the Lombardi. That's it. That's it. That's what it's about. So that was a fun game. It was a, it was it was fun from the standpoint of being able to talk to the Cowboy fans and let them know like y'all, y'all not ready for whatever the 49ers are bringing. And I think they understand that now. But it was cool from a content creator standpoint or just a fan standpoint to just know how good your team is. And again, they could lose to Cleveland next week. It doesn't change how I feel about this team. Everything from here on out is about fine toning. All right, I'm going to tune in. I'm going to click in some of the chats. I got 16 years old, uh, eighth graders. Let's go. <laughs> and Charlene says, Dak, Dak proved he can't compete with Purdy. I would say this. Dak has proved he can't compete with the 49ers. So I don't know if there's a mental block or whatever it is, but Dak has proved he can't compete with the 49ers, even more so than Brock. Brock was terrific. We'll touch more on that tomorrow morning. We got a spy Nick Danger. He says, we built like that. I don't know. 49ers are built like to, to win the championship. Uh, we got... Gregorius Greg, he says, is Kyle the coach of the year so far? I don't know how he's not. You know, a team that had, even last year, Kyle Shanahan went through three different coaches, three different quarterbacks to be one of the best teams in the NFL, in, in the NFL and NFC. And ultimately, damn near win the whole thing, right? You go to the NFC Championship game, you lose because Brock Purdy gets hurt. And then this year, you start off in this life. Just not gonna lose. <laughs> How is he not coach of the year right now? Coach Rob says the whole team didn't show it. You know what, Rob? Coach Rob, 
I think the, the Cowboys team, team did show up. I just don't think it mattered. I don't think it mattered. We got Jackson in the chat. He says, Dallas is really missing Schultz. They don't have enough weapons to compete. They need a lot more than Schultz. When you lose 42 to 10, that ain't just one player. If it's a quarterback, then I give you that. Because the quarterback, they touch the ball every snap. And you know, it, it, you, you can feel that, right? Where guys missing throws or not being able to execute. But they're missing a lot more than just shows against the 49ers. Because other teams, maybe it's just shows. Against the 49ers, they're missing more than just shows. All right, y'all, man, listen. I, I came on here. I didn't really want too much to talk about. I just kind of want to get my thoughts on that. I can't wait. Tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Pacific, I'll talk about Christian McCaffrey. And I heard them say something about McCaffrey, his mom. And she was talking about how, like, he doesn't like when somebody says he did good. He wants things to be great. All right, then my thoughts on that from a parenting standpoint. We're going to discuss all that and more. So tune in tomorrow morning. 8 a.m. Pacific time. We'll be here live. Me and Ashley. Until then, I'm out. Peace.